continuing with risk analysis and the types of things that you need to look out for. Um, now, uh, operations, obviously, you know, all aspects of, of operations, but we've still got the possibility, aside from attacks, of procedural errors in our operations. And so are there things that we are doing that either make um, an error every time or can make an error? And, uh, I mean, race conditions are not solely the province of competing procedures within CPUs. They can happen in our own procedures as well. In our uh, uh, in our people, in, in what we ask them to do. Um, if somebody isn't finished something before someone else needs it in regard to some uh, multi-person, multi-step procedure, uh, which may be very important to us. So, paying attention to these types of aspects, making sure that um, we analyze what our procedures are and whether they can be subject here or have some kind of detective control that is going to catch it and corrective or compensating to deal with it. The, uh, uh, well, you know, in terms of Operating, operations, the operating system itself, flaws in the operating system. And of course that supposedly is beyond our control because, you know, we are relying on that. But should we be? Can we be? Um, is this operating system for this particular uh, platform, for this particular system that we are using, um, suitable for the task that we are giving it, for the reliance that we are putting on it. So uh, finding out those flaws, those types of errors. Um, and of course, these days, communications is everything. The, as has been famously said, the, the network is the computer. Um, so uh, communications, uh, you know, we, we have, by and large, dealt with errors. We have error correcting capabilities. We have uh, uh, lines that are less noisy than they used to be. Um, we have uh, various aspects of the communications protocols that help to ensure that we are uh, you know, that we have reliable communications, that we're not introducing errors by our communications. But then again, you know, do we uh, rely too heavily on that? I, I do remember uh, a system uh, where they had completely ignored the protocol's limitations on uh, cable length and had, you know, introduced all kinds of errors. Uh, and then another situation where in the, own, the uh, local area network um, they had completely ignored the half wavelength uh, requirements and just, you know, chopped the cables anywhere and it caused all kinds of reflections and therefore all kinds of errors. When we did some analysis on the track, I think it was kind of a wonder that any networking got done on on that network that uh there were there were so many errors it was like you know 90 percent error rate collision rate um in this system so uh you know we we have these tools we have to use them properly in order to get the benefit out of them but yes uh, looking at our communication systems in a variety of ways because they are so vitally important to what we are doing with computing these days. And of course the equipment failure, and we'll go into 
uh, that in much more detail, um, both in operations in terms of uh, fault tolerant computing and in business continuity planning. So um, we, you know, there, there are all kinds of uh, problems that we can come into there. Um, one interesting point. Um, there is, of course, a denial of service as an attack. But uh, think about simply delay of service. Uh, do we have situations where we are uh, uh, denied service for a time, you know, and, and so um, in a sense, it's, it's almost, uh, we, we may sometimes simply put it down to latency, that uh, here is the uh, a delay, but we do have the, uh, the service of our technology um, most of the time and uh, eventually. But, uh, you know, the degradation in, in that service because of the, the time delays uh, it could be significant to us. So what do we need to do uh, in regard to that? And, uh, you know, it, it may be a, a delay of service or access. Um, sometimes it may be a delay of attack that uh, the attackers are, the intruders are um, setting up uh, tricks and traps and software to attack us at some other time. Um, it's uh, possibly as a, a force multiplier, an attack multiplier, uh, possibly um, so that uh, uh, they won't be caught or, or uh, it will be at a time when uh, perhaps most of the staff is, is off work, uh, whatever, um, you know, it can be a thing. Um, and in, in that regard, um, uh, one really good book. Uh, Wynne Schwartow and I have a, a really interesting uh, relationship in, in terms of his books. Uh, he sends me his books to review, and I review them, send back a draft, and uh, he sends me back a nasty message saying, oh, you said terrible things about my wonderful book. And, you know, I really haven't said terrible things, but, you know, I have pointed out some of the flaws. Uh, and, and we do have a difference of opinion in terms of the importance, the significance, of uh, different approaches. Um, Wynne is very much into sensationalism. I am a teacher, so I am very much into accuracy. Um, but one of his books I have absolutely no quibble with whatsoever, and that is Time-Based Security. And he makes the point there, no security is perfect 100%. Um, your, your objective is always to try and ensure that you delay an attacker long enough to detect and respond to the attack. Uh, so in, in terms of thinking of time and uh, attacks, safety, security, um, excellent resource. I highly recommend it.